We're going to do a block and create an area so that we can make sure that design that we place in that block is accurate. So first off, I want to go to my file and open up and I want to go into blocks and bring in the feather design. Do you want to clear the area? Yes, because I'm going to be creating a new area. So yes. Now let's create the new area. So we need to go to area and this will be a multi-point area and you can start in any one of these corners. You just have to go in the order. So I can start here and I like, for this block, I'm going to do it so that it's a quarter inch in. My hopping foot is the accurate guide for that. So as I put that there, I press multi-point. Moving up to the top, put, place that in the corner, multi-point. And let me press refresh so you can see as I'm going along here, I've created my first line. Press multi-point. You can see how it's closed in. At this point I have a triangle, but I actually have a square on my fabric and multi-point. Looking at the area tells me that this block is not exactly square. It's almost seven and a half by 7.66. So that mean, means that if I were to put an ac actual square block in there, it wouldn't fit. But by creating the area, I can make that fit. We're going to now go to skew and I want to skew this block in here. If I press skew, what that did was that resized it and it repositioned it all in one function. So if I take this back and look on the, on the um, fabric and re in relationship to the block, it has positioned that and resize that so that all of those angles or those corners, everything is accurate. I'm ready to quilt. I want to go to quilt, but before I go to quilt, I'm actually going to go to settings and we're going to, I want to show you a tie off function. I've been using micro throughout and that's what I like is the micro, but I'm going to go back to the tack and this is four tie-offs on that. I'm going to bring it down to two. So this is a tack which goes uh, forward two and then back two and then can, goes on stitching. So we've got that setting set and our pull-up. I'm doing a pull-up. We'll do an auto pull-up on this. I have my pause delay. We can turn that on or off. Right now I have it off. So I'll turn it on for this so you can see how that works. And it's at one second. I, could, I have auto jump. There's not any jumps in this, so I don't need to worry about that. And the nice thing about this is once I go to quilt and start quilting, I still have settings up there that I can go in and change my settings on the fly as it's quilting. So right now, proceed. It's moving the machine by itself, so I could just bring up that thread. It's doing the tie-off, so it's going forward two, and then it's coming back over the top. You can slowly see how that's moving. And I have this, okay, that was set at one second to stop and let me trim my threads. And so now I can go ahead and just press resume. And I have the speed set at quite slow. I'm going to increase that speed. I always like to start my speed at least on medium, depending on the design, sometimes on slow, just to see how things are looking. Because if things, if it's going too fast, I'd rather, um, if I know that the design is real small, I want that design to start slow. You can always move it up after. So if I change the speed now, So I like, I can see that it's going too fast. I'm going to slow that down. It gives me more accurate curves. You 
You can see how that's stitching a quarter inch inside of the area because that's where I uh, created the area and it resized it to that area. And the nice thing is that area that I created is consistent all the way around this block. We're finished and now it's going to do its tie off and it's doing that uh, tack tie off where it uh, quilts backwards and then forwards over the top of it and we're finished. Disable our motors. Sometimes you want to release your thread there. Move it aside about six inches so it gives you a good bobbin tail and there's our feather. Nice all the way around placed and resized. Now we did the feather block and it was pretty square but what if you have a block that is not quite so square but it's still four points. So I have this block here I've just done a use my move and did a 45 degree angle and created still four points and I want to put a design that'll fit in that. So I created the area so you can see the area on my screen and now I want to go to skew so I've got skew and I want this design to skew into that area well that's not really pretty but it at least fit within that area what if I bring a, another design in let's go in and bring we don't want to save that design let's put the cross hatch we want to, don't want to clear the area Go to skew and let's skew that. See what that does? It actually creates a curved cross hatching. You know, and you can do that if you have an area that you want cross hatched and you don't want to have to use a ruler. So it makes it for a nice curved cross hatching. There's all different size areas that you can create. You can use that skew and it works beautiful.